Welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Jeremy Gaines, here with Logan Brandis and Austin Groff. The college basketball season just got underway last week after a delayed start, and we're here to break down the Big Ten Conference. Logan, there were a lot of teams last year that could have made, could have made the NCAA tournament, but I want to know who you see as a top team in 2020 and 2021. I think Illinois has to be easily the best all-around team in the Big Ten right now. You take a look at Io Desunmu, who He has taken a huge step so far this season. He's uh, close to, close up to six, uh, 26 points, eight rebounds, seven assists per game to start out the year. He's been great alongside their, their freshman, Adam Miller. And in the Big Ten, where really good teams have really dominant big men, Kofi Cockburn has put up a double-double in almost every game this year as a sophomore. And a majority of this Illinois team, they were here last year. They're very experienced. And that experience has helped them out early on in the season. And with some really important games coming up later on in the year, it can make a huge difference once Big Ten play starts. Yeah, Logan, like you said, I also agree. Illinois has been very impressed this season, especially in freshman Adam Miller. He's a great compliment to DeSumo and Coburn. Their roster is so much talent. Their potential is very high. I see them as like the number three Big Ten team right now personally I think Wisconsin and Iowa are just a little better because they have more experience they have more players returning but I do see Illinois they're gonna there's in the best conference in the nation right now so they're gonna be able to improve so much and we see they had a close game against Ohio and they're already learning and playing well I think honestly they should have lost that game against Ohio since they had a horrible defensive possession at the end of the game and just fouled the sumo and was able to hit the free throws to win that game but I see Illinois improving a lot this season and contending with Iowa and Wisconsin for the Big Ten title this season. And so Illinois obviously is a very talented team and could have a lot of potential this year, but you know, Iowa, the Hawkeyes were really one of the top teams in the conference last season. Very exciting to watch. They returned a lot of talent from last year's squad, including one of the player of the year front runners and Luca Garza. He's one of the most exciting players in college basketball. I want to know from you guys, if Iowa is really the team to beat in the big 10. I think they're definitely a top team in the big 10 this year, definitely around top three but I don't think they're the team to beat. Now, they have Luka Garza, who, as you said, is the best player in the conference and one of the best players in college basketball this year. He's starting out the year with 34 points and almost 10 rebounds per game. He's he's taken a huge jump from his junior year and looks like he's playing his best basketball of his career as a senior. But the question is with Iowa is what's surrounding Garza? Joe Weiskamp has been the best scorer after Garza, yet he's only averaging 12.5 points per game. And Patrick McCaffrey's been a great shooter off the bench for Iowa. But other than that, you don't really know what you're going to get with this Iowa team. If Garza has just one bad night, it could be bad news for Iowa, especially with Col- Burn, who we mentioned before, Zach Edley, Micah Potter, and Liam, Liam Robbins all being great centers in the Big Ten. It's a, it's a center-heavy conference, so Garza could easily struggle one night, but – if he does, you don't really know what you're going to get from this Iowa team. That's the one thing that really concerns me with this team. Yeah, Logan, I completely agree with you there. Garza, he is insane. 36 points in that first half. But like you said, their guards, they do lack in the guard play. And their guards are going to have to step up, except he chose wise camp, like you said. But my biggest concern with Iowa is I'm personally not a big fan of Fran McCaffrey. He's always lacked defensively. And because he likes to push the pace of Iowa, he likes to grab the rebounds and go down the floor and, and play a high tempo game which you can't really do when you just have Garza because Garza is going to be struggling. He's going to be struggling to get rebounds when it's just him down there. And like you said, if Garza is not producing, who's going to do it for Iowa? Like if Garza wasn't there for Iowa this season, they probably wouldn't be in consideration for the Big Ten this season. This conference is known to be one of the deepest across college basketball. And Austin, as you said, they might be the best conference in the sport right now. Are there dark horse teams that might sneak their way up towards the top of the of the standings, you know, we've, we've seen this before that there are a lot of different teams that can make noise. Uh, who, who might who might come and surprise us? I think Indiana could be a very interesting team this year. They returned Trace Jackson Davis, who as a freshman played really well. And in their first game of the year, they, he put up 26 points and 11 rebounds in, in their Hoosiers opening win this year. And the problem with Indiana is that same with Iowa, they're a one-dimensional team with Trace D- Jackson Davis being their best player, just the worst one-dimensional team. They returned Rob Finisi, who was injured part of the season, as well as Al Durham, which is their starting guard duo uh, for last season. So they have that returning for them. But what could be very important for this season is the development of their top recruit from a year ago, Christian Lander, 
Lander's one of the top recruits in the country, but he starts the season off on the bench. Didn't really play much in Indiana's first game. He's only 18 years old, but if he can find himself getting a huge role early on in the season, this Indiana team can definitely cause trouble in the later half of the season once conference play starts. I'll tell you what, Logan, I was really impressed with Indiana's performance against Providence. Big performance from Race Thompson. He was able to step up and complement their offense there. And they were able to hold Providence best player, David Duke, to 12 points. And their defense as a collective group was really impressive. But my two teams, I don't know if they're going to win the Big Ten this year, but they're definitely sleeper teams. So we all go to Penn State, and I think people are sleeping on them personally. We did lose Lamar Stevens, but I was very impressed with the performance against VMI, Virginia Military Institute, in that game two days ago, I think it was. And they struggled in the first half. But listen to these stats here for Penn State. So they're currently ranked number one in the nation for steals per game at 18. They had, they shot 93% from the free throw line, and they had the best turnover margin of 11 in the nation, which is really impressive for them so far. So I thought personally that Penn State was going to lack defensively since we lost Lamar Stevens and Mike Watkins, who are huge forces in the inside. But Sam Sessoms and Jamari Wheeler were crazy. Their hands are active. They're, they do everything defensively for Penn State. And it was surprising to see Jamari Wheeler hit four threes and lead Penn State in scoring after he was like fifth or sixth in Penn State scoring last year. So I see Penn State actually playing better than people are anticipating. And I think that you need to get Myron Jones going more offensively. He struggled in that game against VMI. And then my other sleeper team is Nebraska. Now, Nebraska last year is probably the worst team in the Big Ten. But the crazy thing about their roster is that they have five transfer players. So it's a completely new roster. The most impressive player on this team is the transfer from Western Kentucky, Delano, Delano Banton. He is averaging 14 points, six assists, seven rebounds, and two blocks per game. He's doing it all for Nebraska. He's the transfer from West, Western Kentucky, like I said. And Western Kentucky is a great team this year. And they also have some other complimentary pieces in Trey McGowan's from Pitt. So I really liked what Nebraska has been doing this season. They did lose in Nevada, but Nevada's got a great defensive program there. But I think Nebraska is going to surprise some people this season. Yeah, and to your point about Penn State, um, it'll be interesting to see how they match up when they really get in a Big Ten competition because, as we've kind of talked about, a lot of big, good big men in this conference. So that will really tell us about how this Penn State team is constructed to give us a better idea of what's going on there. Um, and I don't feel that it's necessarily that hard for to have good guard play against a team like VMI. I don't think you're dealing with superior size there. So uh, the guard play, as you said, defensively was very encouraging but we'll see how, how this team plays out because we can't really deny that they've lost a lot of size and that will, will hurt this Nittany Lion team to some degree. But that ends our discussion of the Big Ten basketball landscape. We'll continue to have coverage of college basketball as this season continues to progress. For Logan Brandis and Austin Groft, I'm Jeremy Gaines. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also, follow us on Twitter at PSSN TV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.